Closed captioning for The Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the taste, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on The Casey Malone Show. Today, we relive Youngstown rock and roll history with Pat Palumbo of Left End. And I bake chocolate chip cookies with sea salt. But first, Tom Dundix, the man behind Gray Matter Leather. Well, right now we are at the worldwide headquarters of Gray Matter Leather. And we are here with the CEO, head artisan, and the man in charge of Gray Matter. But 10 years ago, Tom Dundix, you were a mechanical engineer. Yeah, I was uh, mechanical engineering, uh, and uh, uh, ten years ago, the uh, aphasia, it's ro- rotor-rooter, um, here's my, here, it's uh, dead, so. Due to a stroke. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, difficult. Uh, Chrissy Mosier Dundix, I mean, savior, I mean, I, I can't do nothing. I can't talk, uh, my kids. Uh, the dog, I can do dog, that's it. I mean, I can't spell my first name. Um, but um, Candace and uh, Susan, the spooch therapy uh, worked. It was uh, two years. Uh, thank God they helped me out because uh, it was, I can't talk. I mean, nothing. So every day they, Help me, help me, help me. Um, but the depressing, I was sleeping, uh, going downhill. I mean, five years ago, I, my uh, girlfriend uh, died, Capabianca. She, she said, you need to do something. So uh, I was at the internet, uh, woodworking, uh, iron, uh, nothing, nothing. I said, let's do leather. I, I like it. I bought it, Whew. bad, I mean bad. Look, I mean, <laughs> look at this, is, I mean. These were his first samples. I mean. This wallet is so st- <laughs> I mean. It's a weapon. But you know what, your stitching is good. Yeah. I mean, your sizing is correct, yeah. your portions. Not really, not really. <laughs> the first. Not really. I mean, hey. I mean, it's sweet. Yeah. I, okay, all right. <laughs> So obviously you've moved on uh, from well, your down, remedial down, skills. Yeah, yeah, downstairs I was uh, sewing and cutting every day. Uh, and right now it's uh, a year and a half. I, I got I got the program. Uh, this is- uh, Beautiful it's work. It's good, yeah. This is uh, wonderful. Uh, I mean, these are soft and supple. Right. They make sense. They, yeah. no sharp edges. Well, this is- They'll age five years beautifully. ago, five years ago, and <laughs> yes. now, I mean. Well, I'm telling you, the progress is amazing. Right. Ellie Dundix is Tom's daughter, and, you know, your fa- according to your father, the family really has helped mm-hmm. with his recovery. And over the last 10 years, what a difference you must mm-hmm. have seen. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, as a kid, you you look and you're like, oh, you see your parents working and so then you work. And so when, yeah. as a young kid, it's, it, that was halted. Um, it was impressive to see how he kind of figured out this new life. I mean, when he first had the stroke, we were labeling milk bottles for him to say milk and we'd have flashcards like red, blue, green. I mean, going from not even be able to pronounce my name, my brother's name, my sister's name, to him just figuring out on his own time what he was gonna do with this second life that he was given. He's in um, Magnolias on the Green. His products are featured there. Um, Sadie Dental, YM Camera, and Hackett's Pub. So, Is the core personality and that spirit soul, I mean, is it still there? It's still your dad? Yeah, I mean, 
anybody who meets him, it's like, or they'll say, I'm I'm Tom Dunnix's daughter. I'm like, oh, is that is that a good or a bad thing? Like, do you know my dad? Is it a good or a bad? Like, do you? And so it's he's he definitely is. Um, he's a personality that needs to be nurtured. And so mm -hmm. if you know him, um, you know to love him. But um, that personality is still there. And if anything, it's gotten better and stronger because um, it has been. You know, he was a stickler and he was the one to lay the hammer on a lot of things. And now I think he's loosened up with himself. So mm -hmm. he's just, I kind of opened his mind to a lot of different things, um, which is great. And the creativity is there too, so. And usually before he was kind of a math, um, a math guy, very, mm -hmm. very strict with that. But now he's he's gotten creative in, in the his work. There are some really great gifts in here. Mm -hmm. You know, for the cigar smoker, you have a, a couple different cases mm -hmm. of this. This is sweet. And then coasters. Mm -hmm. What a great idea because leather will absorb the moisture. Mm -hmm. Where I hate when you have like a glass on a coaster and it still runs over mm -hmm. on the table. You're like, well, what is the point? Yeah. So these are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a great gift idea. He is a one-man operation. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, he does the cutting, mm -hmm. everything, you yeah. know, from start to finish. Mm -hmm. What kind of timelines are we looking at here? If you check on the website, um, it's you can't order anything online. It's just all the inventory that he has or can make. So he yes. has no backlog inventory other than coasters are really easy to mm -hmm. make. So when you call him, you want an order, he makes it from scratch. Um, he starts the process. He'll give you the timeline and then he can ship, drop it off if you're local. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, it's, and he's really transparent with how long things will take and um, he, he hustles too. So if you needed something, um, he tries to get it done for you. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. I'm all about local and my bank is Farmers National Bank. Farmers is the true hometown bank in the Mahoney Valley, standing strong for our local families and businesses since 1887. Farmers is also future focused with a lab branch, interactive teller machines, and best in class mobile mortgage app. We've all learned the value of local relationships, businesses, and communities. Switch to Farmers. Kamara Jewelers is the place to buy an engagement ring because we want a relationship with you that lasts a lifetime. Your commitment with her is the same commitment we have to you. We want to sit down with you and teach you about diamonds so you're educated on what you're buying. We have the largest selection we ever have, which is the largest in the area and at the best value. And if it's not something in our case, we could always custom make it. We can make any dream come true. Get real, get Kamara. Woolley Brothers has a great choice of quality cheeses. We use our relationship with Old World Houses to specially select the product and then have it custom cut and packaged by our own local artisans. At Woolley Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Join the Isle and Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available. Given is living. Join the Isle and Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available at $13 an hour. Given is living. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. 
I'm Elizabeth Bernard. For more than 30 years, I've provided our Valley with sound legal advice. My associate Jennifer Rigetti and I will be your legal representatives if you're involved in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident. Don't try to handle it yourself. We'll navigate the red tape of dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the obstacles that you'll face. Remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases, and hiring a lawyer does not mean you have to go to court. Call attorney Elizabeth Bernard, local legal experience for more than 30 years. Family owned Mayflower Wilm Insurance Group is your full service independent agency. Our family works with a variety of insurance companies so you have the best choices for your insurance needs. Let us find the right product at the right price. Personal lines, business, farm, commercial insurance, life insurance. Trust locally owned Mayflower Wilm. You focus on what's important. We'll take care of the details. Mayflower Wilm, close by with three locations to serve you. A while back, I baked my chocolate chip cookies with sea salt, and it really was a hit. One of my most requested recipes. And I make this recipe quite often. And the former recipe had bread flour and cake flour. And the one time I was out of bread flour, so I used regular all-purpose unbleached. And let me tell you, it was even better. So then I tweaked this recipe just a little bit, and I think this is a better cookie recipe. For this recipe, you'll need two and a half sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature, one and a quarter cups of light brown sugar, one cup of sugar, two large eggs at room temperature, two teaspoons of pure vanilla, two cups of cake flour, one and two thirds cups of all-purpose unbleached flour, one and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of sea salt, more for sprinkling the cookies, and 10 to 16 ounces of dark chocolate chips. We are going to put in all the butter, two and a half sticks. I know this makes a lot of cookies, but if you're gonna make it, you might as well just go big. I'm adding the brown sugar, and I'm going to add the regular sugar. Now, I am just going to put this on medium, and I'm going to run this for a good five minutes until it is light and fluffy. Okay, so now it's light and fluffy. And now it is ready for the rest of the ingredients. So what we're gonna do now is keep it on medium, and I'm gonna add each egg one at a time until combined. So now the eggs are incorporated and now I'm going to add the vanilla. Two teaspoons. I know that the flowers are pre-sifted, but I find that sifting them again really, really makes for a better cookie. So this is the two cups of the cake flour, all right? I put it in my sifter. Look how old this is. I think it was my grandma's. But it still works just as well. And so I'm going to sift it. So when you make it nice and light and fluffy, instead of packing it in to the cup, what you do is just spoon it and then shake it to level it. And then do that again for the second cup. And we have just a little bit of the flour left over, but we'll have a lighter cookie. Now we'll do that with the all-purpose flour too. So now we have both flours in the bowl and we're going to add our salt, our baking powder, and our baking soda. And I will just whisk this together. Keep this on low because you will get puffs and puffs of flour dust. So here we go, one at a time, till it's incorporated. Now I don't use the paddle when I add the chips. So I like a darker chocolate chip, but you can use bittersweet, whatever you like, or the um, milk chocolate. But I like a little bit of a darker, oops. It's a little thick. So now I'm gonna mix the chips in. Well, this is such a big batch of cookie dough that I split it in twos 
before I start to chill it in the refrigerator. I usually chill mine overnight, but uh, at least four or five hours, and that really helps the cookie. Um, it just, I think it bakes it so much better. I guess it could be a much softer cookie and not as crispy if you bake them immediately. So by the magic of television, I have nice chilled dough, and I like a smaller cookie. This is about, eh, about a half inch ball. Okay, and then I think if you take like the teaspoon from your measuring cups, that is about the size I like. And then you just roll it in a ball and you about two inches apart. And um, I'll tell you what, these are so good and so easy. Oh, and I gotta preheat the oven to 350. So what we do is we roll the balls and we set them here. And then, I won't make you watch this whole process, but then just take your two fingers and smush them down. And then get your sea salt. I like Malden, nice and flaky. And then you just put a little bit on top, see? And then we'll do that with the whole pan and we'll put them into the oven for 15 minutes. Ooh, these are perfectly done. Perfect. Now let them sit for about three minutes before we remove them and put them on the cooling rack. And I'm gonna throw this batch in. So aren't they beautiful? And they are pretty easy and they are plentiful. This is a huge recipe. And guess what? Mm, they're delicious. I love these things. Love them. Go to my website. It is the revised recipe and I think you're gonna like it better. For my chocolate chip cookies with sea salt. They're right there on the website and you are gonna make these, keep them in the fridge, freeze the dough, but they are so quick and easy to make. You are going to love them. And I recommend a nice hot cup of coffee. Cheers. Cookie Tables and Cocktails will be held February 26th at the Assumption Social Center at St. Mary's Catholic Church. Go to MahoningHistory.org for more details. We'll be right back with more local flavor. I am here with Rude the Dude at the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. What is happening? Nothing. You know, we just finished off last year strong with all of our parties in, in the banquet room. Uh, so we're starting already to book parties this spring in the banquet room also. We got a couple things we're working on uh, for outside in the parking lot, a couple different big events that we'd like to put on this year for everybody. So we're just, uh, we're starting the year out strong and starting to get ready. Oh, looking forward to spring. And don't forget, you looking for those local beers? They are right here on tap at the Magic Tree. And I gotta tell you, this Nitro Brew Coffee is made right here. Yeah, we make it. this in-house with our roasted beans from the Youngstown Coffee Company. So we support local coffee, beer, and food. Oh man, always something happening right here. Go to their website, magictreepumpandeatery.com and find out more. Donate now. Gava Camp has a generous family that will match every dollar you donate. Help us build a barrier-free educational camp for our friends with special needs. Visit our website or call for more details. Giving is living. The 44th annual Mahoning Valley St. Patrick's Day Parade is Sunday, March 13th. Enter your group, organization, or marching band at mvstpatrickparade.com.
My basement was dreadful. Cracked concrete, chipped tiles, it was my dumping ground. Carpet, vinyl, wood, don't last. Now I have Pebble Stone, the best basement floor covering. It has transformed my basement and expanded my family's living space. It's easy to clean, withstands flooding, and will never need replaced. You will love your basement. Pebble Stone, the best flooring system. Call today to save 60% off your new Pebble Stone floor for a limited time only. Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. At Ruli Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Is it time to update your color style? RNS Paint will assist you with your choice of over 3,400 Benjamin Moore colors. Vibrant, durable, and easy to apply. Be current, be stylish. Shop RNS Paint. I am here with Patsy Palumbo, drummer from Left End. Tenacity, that's the name of the book that he published about the band, uh, the whole history, really, of rock, basically, in the Mahoning Valley. And I was thinking, Pat, when I was reading this, I said, this could be like a yearbook for Youngstown Rock and Roll High, or the Who's Who. <laughs> when I'm going through this, the names, how do you have such a good memory of dates and times and all the people involved? Well, good question. A lot of people have asked me that. Actually, I was always an impressionable person. So, and I, I think I'm a good listener. So I heard the things that were happening, I watched the things that were happening, and they always had an impression on me. And frankly, I was a storyteller. Mm -hmm. So I would tell the stories that are in the book, I've told again and again. And frankly, that's why I wrote the book, because people finally said, you know, you should write a book. You have all these great stories and memories of the left end days and with what it was like in music in the valley and in the tri-state area for about 35 years. Why don't you put that all in them? So I did. What got you into the drums? Well, um, I tell the story in the book that when I was a young boy, our neighbor uh, who lived next door to me on the south side of Youngstown was a drummer in a band. And, and they, were, they were actually back in the days of the Bill Haley Comet and the Comets stuff. And they were doing songs like Rock Around the Clock and that. And I would be four years old sitting on the basement steps <laughs> watching these guys. And the uh, drummer was uh, Tom Hodges, my neighbor. And I always looked up to him, him as like an older brother. And uh, I'd always say, I want to play the drums like Tom. You know, Dennis, Dennis T. Menace. T. Menace. Yes, that's correct. And God rest his soul, but what, uh, what a, the lyrics? I mean, he immediately yeah, he would, he picked would, up on everything. Uh, I, people saw the persona he was on the stage, which was, of course, legendary. Yes, larger than life. Not only as a phenomenal singer, uh, I, I would compare him to any of the great rock singers of his time, but uh, also his antics on stage, his, his mannerisms on stage, he just commanded the stage. I'd always heard that after you got your contract with Polydor, that Casablanca, who had signed Kiss, had kind of muscled Polydor to squelch you guys because they had the makeup band. But you say that's not true. No, uh, so many uh, said they saw you in Cashbox and they stole that from you. Uh, but I, I don't think that's true because if you go back and chronicle it, you'll see that Kiss was actually wearing makeup before we were signed with Polydor, so they were into it, okay. well, about the same time. We I just were. like to stir up stuff. I, I like a little a story. A friend of ours uh, ran into Ace Freely. Okay. And asked him that. He said, Ace, he said, I got to ask you something. When Kiss started out, is it true you guys stole your makeup from Left End in Youngstown, Ohio? And he said, I don't even, I don't remember. He said, but if we did, it probably was the best theft anybody could make. <laughs> yeah. When things started falling apart because of the management, at Polydor, I mean, that had to just be a gut punch. Well, it was devastating because they had uh, plotted a European tour for us. We were 
known around the United States and much of North America as the monster that ate Cleveland. They determined they were going to send us to Europe. They said, we want you guys to go in Europe and exactly. break in Europe because you will be the monster that devoured Europe. Then you're going to come back. Here. And all that was planned out, but the Europe thing never happened. But the people that were supporting us at the record company uh, left the record company because of a merger they had with another company. Mm -hmm. So our people, so to speak, our contacts weren't even at the office anymore. So we would call and say, we want to talk to Peter Siegel. We want to talk to Elaine Goldstein. We want to talk to this person. They'd go, well, they're not available right now. Never know what's in front, but I see. What was one of your favorite shows? Probably for me, uh, when we played with the Funkadelic Parliament in Detroit at Cobra oh. Arena, was we actually headlined uh, a concert. And the, our warm-up band was the Funkadelic Parliament. Can you believe with George that? Clinton. And what you lent him the cymbals? Oh yeah, I lent the drummer. <laughs> he he, he kind of propositioned me. Can I borrow those flashy cymbals? And I went, sure, go ahead. Do you miss it? You, I miss it a lot. And uh, uh, you know that's why when I had the opportunity to play with Leanne Binder and Jennifer oh, Rock. Oh, and she is uh, so talented. Yeah, she's just awesome. She's incredible. I'm, I'm, just, it was an honor working with Leanne and, and Roy Greary from Left Dennis. I know, and band. Roy was also in, in Generation Rock. Yeah, and uh, we, uh, it, it, so that was incredible to come back again and play again with Roy and, and do the thing again. But So you're still going to play? I'm, I jam every day. I got this little electronic drum set, Casey, in, my, in our living room, literally. My wife uh, allows me to do this, and I'm banging all the time. And the dogs think I'm still good. Our dogs play. You still got it, man. You still got it, you old dude. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.